Hello and welcome to Exotic Ghana UK, your Chris Weekly. On this week's episode, we'll be looking at why we've had such a bad spring and how this will affect the plants in the garden. So I'm here in the greenhouse surrounded by lots of wonderful plants, but where I really want to be is out in the garden finishing off, hardening off these plants and actually planting out the tender things now. It's May the 22nd, I think, today? 23rd. And it's really been a poor spring. The weather all year, especially up here in the north, has just been below par. We had the coldest January, which I keep mentioning on my videos, and we've had the driest April and we've had one of the coolest and definitely the wettest Mays so far on, well, in at least recent years, if not on record, we'll find out at the end of the month, with some areas in double the normal rainfall. And all this bad weather, which if we compare it to last year, when we had an absolutely amazing spring in terms of being really warm and sunny, although it was pretty dry, when all the plants could get out early, it could be grown on, and the soil was nice and warm, and everything just got on with it. Whereas this year, we've been stuck inside, we've been trying to hold back the plants, but they're getting bigger and bigger, and trying to grow in here, and we're getting less and less room, and things really, really want to get outside now. And we're gonna look in this video why the weather's been so bad, and then we're gonna look at the plants we've got in the greenhouse, plants in the ground, and see how far behind they are, or are they not far behind at all? So, on with this week's episode. So, why did we have such bad weather this spring in March, April and May? Well, if we look at where the high pressure was over the UK, it was just to the west of us and on top of the UK, and it meant we had lots of settled weather. It was extremely, extremely dry, which meant nothing was getting water in the garden. So the tree ferns were needing to be watered, and nothing had that water just to start into growth. And we also had frost pretty much every night. And the high pressure was just there, and it meant we get all the air driven down from the Arctic and from Russia, which was a lot colder and drier, and it just kept those frosts coming. It was dry, it was settled, but it wasn't great for growth in April. In fact, it was the sunniest, but the frostiest month of April on record in the UK. And now we got into May, we still had frost early on in the month, but basically the high pressure has moved across now and it's allowed loads of low pressures to come off the Atlantic, race across the UK and basically bring rain after rain after rain. And now we've had rainfall totals that were much higher than average. In fact, many places in the UK have had double their monthly rainfall for May already and we're still not at the end of the month. So the garden now, we've gone from extreme of being really, really dry and cold to being still very cold, to be honest, but it's been so wet that the garden is basically getting waterlogged. And all this continuous wet weather and this cool weather, slight frost at the start of the month, still occasional frost, depending where you are in the UK, uh, throughout May and rain after rain after rain has meant it's just not being nice to get plants out, to get plants hardened off. We've had storms, we've had wind, we've had thunder, we've had lightning, we've had hailstones, we've had absolutely everything this month of May. And altogether, March, April and May has been a really, really poor month for the weather. And as you can see from the charts, it's the reason be because this high pressure to begin with and then all these low pressures allowing all these weather fronts to come in across the UK and give us lots and lots of cold, rainy weather. So here in the greenhouse, I've still got pretty much everything. The aeoniums and the palms trees, they've all gone outside now. They've been hard enough, they've been in shade and they're ready to plant out. But we left still with all my bananas in here, all my tender plants. So we've got things like the irisene, We've got my cannas as well, and we've got begonias, we've got the bugmansias. I'm looking around, what else can I see? Lots of dahlias as well that we've grown from seed. All my climbing plants, caladiums, everything is still in here and not ready to go out at all because we've still got wind and rain forecast for the next few days. Luckily, 
for the last few days in May. It looks like it's going to settle down, dry out and warm up a bit and thankfully then we'll be able to get some of these plants out. So although it looks, well it is, it is frustrating we're not being able to get more and more out and if you have got stuff out it won't be doing much because we've had storms which will put things back, damage leaves and things if they're not being hard enough properly and it's been cold so nothing will be growing very well if you've planted out early in most of the UK. So it's been difficult, it's better to sort of hold back a bit before planting stuff out and finishing off hardening them off if the weather's been cool like it has been this year. But as I look around I'm thinking these plants need bigger pots, they need feeding, they need to get into the ground basically, they need that extra nutrition they get from in the ground, a free root run, the sun on their backs and they can actually grow. But we can't quite get there yet because we've not got the weather. A few more days and it'll be fine but right now they're having to stay in. And thinking is this going to hold back the garden for the summer? Well actually the plants in the greenhouse here will put on a great show once they get out and we're not really late yet. Yes we've not been able to harden off all my plants yet, the very tender things because it's just not been nice but it's May the 23rd. I don't normally plant out until this date. It's the third week in May. Even into June before I plant out absolutely everything. What I've normally done by now is got all the ground completely prepared, weed freed and got a lot of things planted out like my aeoniums on sets so will be basically ready to be planted out as well. But we're not too far behind. We'll get all this planted out over next weekend probably in the weekend after. So yes we'll be going to start of June but it's not a million days behind and the weather will warm up and things will catch up and hopefully by July everything will be looking fantastic and it will get better and better throughout the season and the season's longer now than it used to be. Things don't finish in September. It gets better and better throughout August when my open days are. September the garden is probably looking at its best although a few things have slowed down flowering like some of the dahlias and it's still looking great in October and November if we don't get frost the garden still looks good in November albeit some things will be brought in the most tender things in November but overall we've got several months where we can really enjoy the garden and some people say to me why do we go through all this effort especially with these tender plants just for a very short season well it's not really a short season and yes it's a lot of effort if you grow these sort of tender plants but I think the rewards outweigh the effort that goes into it and it's not a short season compared to traditional cottage flowers which will be over by mid-June more or less into July perhaps and that's only like a two month window whereas this goes on for June, July, August, September, October and into November so we're getting basically six months of stunning colour hopefully big dramatic foliage and lots of, sort of exotic exuberance throughout the garden for all the summer months and they're the months really that we spend our leisure time outside where we can relax because it's warm and enjoy the surroundings. So let's go and have a look in the garden and see how far behind the plants that live in the ground all year round. So we're out in the garden now and it's a cold day, it's about 12-13 degrees, overcast, rain's due later as well and I'm in the part of the garden where I should be surrounded by gunner leaves and at the moment they do look quite impressive but because of all the frost we had in April all the leaves were frosted back and now we're into May got these new leaves coming up but these should be well above me by now and this Arali here you probably can hardly see this was again frosted back and the new leaves are only just starting to emerge and we're going to have a look around the garden now, see where growth is and where we expected it to be for this time in the year. So people asked about the collocasias that are left in the ground and as you can see there's a good patch here of pink chinas but normally by now I'd have expected at least one, probably two leaves on all these plants. There's about, about 10 or 20 plants in shot here all across the screen and you can hardly see that because none of them have got leaves yet. The first sort of bit of growth you can see on most of these, these little pinky red emerging buds, 
but yet to break out into nice green leaves. So I would say we're probably about two or three weeks behind at the, the, the minimum, but on good years, like last year, these were fully into leaf. So about probably about five weeks behind last year's growth at this point in the season. Here we have some more pink chinas. Again, these were covered with straw over winter and they're just showing some signs of life. But again, no leaves, even though it's in full sun and south facing. If we look at the Tetrapanax papyrifera here, you can see we've only got small leaves. And again, these are several weeks behind because everything that grew in April was completely frosted off. And because of the cool May so far, then we've only got sort of three or four leaves sort of starting to emerge. And normally these would be much, much bigger by now and several more leaves. The tree ferns on the whole are doing okay. I've got, I think I've got 13 in the garden and about 12 of them are showing some signs of life. This one's most far on with these already about 50, 60 centimetres out of the crown unfurling. And we've got some others around here. Again, these are doing okay as well. Uh, we've got one with black knuckles near the start of the garden where they've been frosted off, which is unfortunate. And I don't want these to be any earlier than this, to be honest, because you still get frost in early May sometimes. So I'm glad these really didn't shoot up in April. So it was a good thing really for the tree ferns. It was dry in April and cool because it meant that we didn't get that early flush of growth. Yes, we had to water them, but they didn't emerge. And now it's got really wet and cool, then they can emerge. And now the frosts hopefully have passed, then it's good for them to go and start growing. And in a matter of two or three weeks, these will be fully emerged. And in a month's time, they'll be nice and hard enough and have amazing luxuriant foliage and all these tree ferns in my tree fern forest. Here we have my arid bed and I've still not taken off the shelter. I've loosened it a bit, but I've not taken off simply because it's not been nice enough weather. It's been rainy pretty much every day in May and I could have taken it off by now, but I think it's benefited from keeping the rain off and being dry in this area. But this will be taken off probably this week because it's gonna settle down by midweek and we won't have constant cold rain. Here, we have the amazing rare Trachycarpus oryphyllus, and this got through the really cold winter well, but now it's slightly warmed up a bit. You can see quite a lot of the leaves look a bit sorry for themselves as they've partially died over winter and only showing the damage now it's warmed up a little bit. But there's plenty of new growth in the centre, and I would say this palm isn't behind at all. It's growing steadily. We've got two leaves in the centre pushing out quite nicely now. The Cycas revoluta is looking fine, starting to go old, these leaves now, starting to age a bit and go yellowish. This is not cold damage, this is just old age damage basically. And we expect a new flush of leaves from the centre in summer. So this isn't behind yet, I wouldn't expect the flush to start really to June when hopefully it'll be a lot hotter than it is now. And here in the shade of the greenhouse we have all my Ioniums that are waiting to be planted out been out here hard and off now. Unfortunately they've experienced some hail showers so we've got a lot of dotting and pitting to a lot of the leaves but these will be fine once we get them in the ground but normally these are in the ground in April so I'm well well behind with planting these out and getting these ready for the summer season. So this is the main part of the garden this is where all the summer colour will be. All these beds will be planted out like I said normally that is done starting third week of May and it's going to have to wait a couple of weeks before we get everything planted out because we had such poor weather. But we're not too far behind. It's a good job we've got some evergreen interest as well. Otherwise we'd have nothing to see in this part of the garden. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Gardening UK. Join me next week. We'll be doing more in the garden.